church say amen. Somebody say I'm reaping God's harvest, God's benefits, God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. Amen. Yeah. Yes, God promise. Amen, 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 amen. We thank you, choir. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. Uh, we are working diligently, choir, so that on this Wednesday night, um, the musician who will be here for your rehearsal on this Wednesday night uh, is Brother Juke Fox coming to us from Highline Community Church here in Denver and uh, works on the staff with uh, Brother Biff Gore. So on this Wednesday night, we will have um, uh, he, him here. We will have Juke Fox. Please plan on being at rehearsal on this Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me? Would you bow your heads? Almighty and gracious God, God of our mothers and of our fathers and our God, now send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us now so that the words which are spoken and the words which are heard may be the words of the truth of your gospel for the living of our days. These things we pray in Jesus' most holy, most anointed, and most wonderful name. And I heard the church say, Amen. Amen. Beloved, I think when we see with our own eyes and behold with our own hearts, 
individuals who are tremendously gifted, tremendously talented, or tremendously smart. I think it's in those moments that we know we love a God who won't hold back. Amen? Consider for a moment this morning the story of one of one of our greatest composers, Edward Kennedy Duke Ellington. He was called the most prolific composer of the 20th century because he composed 2,000 pieces in a variety of forms. Among Ellington's most revered works are Mood Indigo, Sophisticated Lady, and the Symphonic Suites Black, Brown, and Beige, and Harlem. One of the highlights of Ellington's illustrious career was a series of sacred concerts about which he said this. He said, I was able to say loudly and openly what I have been saying to myself on my knees. Perhaps the secret to Ellington's astounding creativity was his thirst for newness. Somebody say newness. Somebody else say I can stand a little bit of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Jazz critic Stanley Krauss writes, Ellington was unable to settle for an earlier version of himself. Author Albert Murray reflected that Ellington was blessed with an experimental disposition. <laughs> Perhaps the best expression of Ellington's openness to newness comes from Ellington himself. When asked to identify his favorite composition, Ellington's answer was always the same. My favorite composition is my next one. My next one. With all of Ellington's talents and treasured measures of, his, of music he left us, one biographer wrote of his earthly, earthy demon that he fought in his career. It's a demon we all might be a little bit familiar with. For Ellington and those who were closest to him knew that he had a demon chasing him called procrastination. Somebody say procrastination. He waited to the last minute on everything, y'all. <laughs> Yet God never held back on the Duke's tremendous talents. Today, I want to encourage you to have confidence in God's love that won't let you go. Say, God's love won't let me go. Amen. I want you to, 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 to realize and have confidence in the fact that God's plan and God's intent and God's will for your life is there to help you grow, to help you uh, with the newness you need also in your life. Amen. How many of us still use the same soap that we used when we were kids? Raise your hand. Oh, they don't make that soap anymore, right? Come on, somebody. That's right. Because even Procter & Gamble know they got to get new sometimes. Amen? If you were using zest, there's a new zest. Amen? If you were using coast, it's a new coast. If you were using tone, come on, that's new and improved. Come on, somebody. Whatever's cheap is whatever has a coupon associated with it. Amen. Amen. God is so intent on making sure that you experience the new in your own lives, beloved, that one theologian put it this way. God will whisper. God will shout. God will touch and tug. God will take away our burdens. He'll even take away our blessings. If there are a thousand steps between us and God, God will take all those steps but one. And God will leave that final step for us. And the choice is always ours. Please understand, God's goal is not to make you happy. God's goal is to make you his. Amen? Beyond the confidence you need in God's love that's never letting you go is the confidence you need to maintain in how lavish the love of God really is. Lavish. Lavish means over the top. Lavish. It means more than you could imagine. Lavish. It's sumptuous, like we heard in the Lazarus story, right? Sumptuous, and it's 
opulent, lavish is lush and it's generous, lavish is grand and it's posh, it's plush and it's swanky, lavish. Sarah Van Brethnock challenged us to lavish love on every living being that you meet, amen? On every living being that you meet and then see how you feel different at the end of the day. Someone I love with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my mind. Someone I love that is so close to me as, as my next breath. Amen. That someone encouraged me to make sure I lavish some love on the spiders I see that come in in the autumn time. Anybody notice there's more Spiders between summer and autumn that come in the house. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and folks say, I want you to lavish some love on the spider. Don't you? What, what, what do you do when you see them? I do this. <laughs> I go get some spray. Come on, somebody. But 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 there's love even for, for creatures such as this. We're encouraged to lavish love on every living being and to see how that changes us. See how that brings us into the newness of what God's intent is. Now, that one that I love that has encouraged me rightly in this way. Amen. I have begun to do some things differently with those spiders. Amen. I'm working on changing that even in my own heart and mind. What Sarah's asking us to do, God's already done. And God's already doing <laughs> Give God a hand praise today. The Bible says to us in John, in 1 John, in, in the first letter of John, chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. We don't deserve it. Oh, taste and see, beloved. The Lord is good. The mercies of God extend from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Our, our passage from Psalm 84 goes on to tell of the utter delight we're invited to enjoy just to have the chance to worship God and to praise God in the beauty of God's sanctuary and not just with ourselves, with our children and the dancers and the artistic expressions in worship that we have. I am grateful that arts touch this, this congregation, this small people of God in such a significant way. Amen. It touches us, the arts, because the arts offer us a view also to God. Amen. And to the greatness of God. Uh, <clears throat> the, the passage from Psalm 84 goes on to tell us from the message translation, it tells us the very same words that we see in our preaching text, this way it says, all sunshine and sovereign is God, generous in gifts and glory. He doesn't scrimp with his traveling companions. It's smooth sailing all the way with God of the angel armies. Same passage, but those words open up so many other images for us. Just raise your hand this morning if you've ever known anybody that scrimped on stuff. Come on, y'all. Scrimpers, stangy, just don't want to give up, come up off of their stuff. Amen? Just don't want to share anything with you. You don't know if it's personal. Oh, you don't, you don't know if it's about you or if it's about them. Amen? They just get ugly. Amen? Scrimping with their stuff. God doesn't scrimp. Amen? Friends may hold back their love and attention sometimes when their own lives overwhelm them or in times or in situations that confuse them or confound them. Amen? They may hold back from us. Family may even hold back on us, hold their love back from us when they're stuck behind feelings of anger or disappointment or dejection or depression. Come on, somebody. No good thing, Psalm 84 assures us. No good thing assures us. It, 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 uh, Psalm 84 assures us, does the Lord withhold 
from those who walk uprightly. No good thing does the Lord withhold from us and from those who walk uprightly. Give God a hand praise for that. Because that's good news today, church. It's news that ought to help us feel great at 48. Amen. That as we march on in the light of God, as we accept and share and announce and pray for God's provision to come in our lives, as we walk in God's will, God will provide the days ahead we're all hoping for. How many of you got some days ahead that you're hoping for? When things will be right if they're not already right. Amen. This God who won't hold back is ready. Ready to take up a place of prominence in your life. For it's true. But you must be open, beloved. You must be the one that opens your heart to God. And you must be the one that walks in God's ways by choice. I want you to walk in God's ways by choice. The English writer Isaac Walton said it best when Walton wrote, God has two dwellings. Somebody say two. One of them's in heaven and the other one is in a meek and thankful heart. Hallelujah. Welcome the God we know in Jesus Christ, beloved. Rely on the God who won't hold back. Trust in our God, our God of mercy. Trust in our God and walk in God's will and in God's ways. And you will see your lives continually changing. You will find yourself saying like, oh, Duke Ellington used to say, it's not what I have done, but it's what I will do because my hand is in the Lord's hands. Amen. Not my last thing, but my next thing is the thing I'm looking forward to. Amen. You worship and praise when you accept God into your house without folk encouraging you, without folk calling you on the phone and reminding you what time church is. Amen. You'll come just because you want to be here. Amen. <laughs> the God that we know, that we love, that we trust. This God is still above all and beyond all and yet and still within all that would accept God as our guardian, our guide, our keeper, and our shade. We, beloved, dwell under the shadow of God's wing, for God looks after us as a hen, a mother hen broods over her little chicks. Oh, you got to see it too to know it and how tender and wonderful it is. Get out to a farm and see it. Maybe even here at the Urban Farm on next Saturday. Amen. God seeks to guide and to lead. But we've got to choose God and keep choosing God ourselves Amen. for our journeys, for all God would have us to do. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks today for we're so eternally grateful that we're yours. We, we thank you, O oh God, that you loved us enough that your word says that you so loved the world that you gave. You gave your only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, O oh God. We thank you that we fall under the unction of Jesus, our Savior, that his blood covers us, O oh God. We thank you for our salvation is assured, not because of what we do, but because of what you said and what you've done. We thank you, O oh God, that we can rely on you. We thank you that we can depend on you. We thank you, O oh God, that beyond all those who scrimp, and who are stingy and who are protective of their love and their stuff like they never want to share it. Oh God, in spite of all of that, your love remains true. Your love remains steadfast. Your love accompanies us when we come into the world 
and your love is with us. Just like you were with Sister Gertrude when she breathed her last breath and went from time to join you, O oh God, in eternity. You're with us when we breathe our last and at all the time in between when we come in and when we go out. So, God, we thank you. Help us live in such a way that you know we're welcoming you into our lives day by day, hour by hour, even moment by moment. These days, oh God, in these times, touch your people again. Strengthen them on every side. No God, if, if these your beloved ones should falter or fall, be the one to catch them and lift them up and keep them going. Keep them marching on towards Zion and heading on towards glory. All of these things we ask in the sweet, the precious, the mighty, and magnificent name, the anointed and, and lovely name, the great name of our chief cornerstone, Jesus. And we all said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's rise. Let's stand on our feet, beloved. As we do, please know that the doors of the church are open as we sing our final song. Uh, we'll understand it better by and by. The doors of the church are open and they're open to you.